Hi guys. So it's now the end of May and uh, it's been about three weeks since I gave you the first introduction to our aquaponics system here on the Chili Farm. So I thought I'd give you an update just to show you what we've been up to so far. So since the last time uh, I showed you the aquaponics system, we've changed the plumbing around a little bit. We've put the fish in and we've now got the grow beds up and running and we've got some plants in. So uh, let me show you around. So the first thing I should point out is that we did have the plumbing at the bottom of each IBC. So it was coming out at the bottom of each one, the normal drain point from an IBC. In the theory that if the IBCs are designed to drain from there, then the water would drain from that. Um, however, in practice, it doesn't quite work like that because in order to get the water to circulate round, you need to put your air in just the right place in order to encourage the water to loop round and come out of there. And it's a bit more difficult. So in the end we gave it some thought and we thought the best thing to do was to actually do a SLO, solids lifting overflow, and put it through the top. So just in um, a probably more traditional way for an aquaponic system, uh, we put that through the top. So what we've done is we've come up to the top of the IVCs and then on the inside what we've done is we've added a overflow, the solids lifting overflow on the inside goes down to the bottom, has a T-piece in there which stops any um, siphons being caused uh, and, and emptying out the tanks. So using two inch waste pipe, one thing that you should consider is the weight of the pipe once you've got the water in there. So in order to make sure that we didn't have any problems with the pipe, what we've done is we've just made some little wooden brackets and we've attached them to the IBCs and then on that we've put the pipe clips just to make sure that the pipe can run through there and there's no weight in the pipes, they're just hanging in midair. because obviously that would uh, cause some of the pipes to move and perhaps if they fractured, uh, could cause all sorts of problems. Okay, so if we come down the tank, the one thing that really has caught us out is the amount of algae that's grown quite quickly. So in three weeks, you'll see that the water has gone a really quite deep green colour. Obviously that's, uh, you know, we've tested the pH level, we've tested um, the ammonia, nitrites and nitrates and it's okay for the fish but it doesn't look that, that good and um, we really want to get that out. So there's two things that we need to do in order to try and discourage the, the algae growth. First is we need to, to filter which obviously we are doing and the second thing is shade. So it's the light that's getting through there that's making the uh, algae uh, able to grow. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of the light coming through the side there. And uh, we've got a rather neat trick. What we're going to do is we're going to put some pallet wrap around the outside uh, and we'll keep them in the shade. So that's uh, something that I'll show you in the next video as an update once we've done that. And then coming along here, in order to get up in the shade, our uh, radial flow filter, we've now managed to fit the cap on top of there. So the cap actually just uh, fits on nice and neatly and it's just got a safety cap. So we can take that off and then get into that when we need to and you can see the water bubbling away nicely there and then going through the overflow and then the same thing for our filter bed which has got the lava rock in there we've been able to fit the cap onto there so the water flows into that and then obviously it flows out got uh, the piping which i managed to finish off so the piping now comes down go underneath a little protective pallet because i need to step over just see a couple of little footprints there just to show that i have been stepping over the top uh, and then those pipes come in and we just cut a little bit away on the side of the dump tank in order that fits in there. So I've got to build a, a top frame on there and then that overflows down into the, the sump tank there. So the sump tank, has got a little clamp on the side there until I manage to uh, finish pinning off the uh, liner. And then the, the addition we've got now, as you can see, we've got the return flow that's coming from our grow beds and from our greenhouse and the deep water culture as well. So I'll uh, show you in there. So we'll go through to the greenhouse just next door and you can see that the pipe, so there's a four inch return pipe, 110 mil pipe, that's coming through from the deep water culture back to the sump tank. And then if we go through to the greenhouse, you'll see that we've uh, got loads of tools here. because We've uh, just about finished doing the work, but obviously um, it's got a bit of tidying up to do now. So the first thing you'll notice is that the deep water culture is sorted and we've got the canal there. Um, it's just over eight meters long, I think 8.2 meters long got the, the styrofoam slabs on top of there. Now it's just the first two that we've actually put holes in and we've put some plants in there. Uh, and the rest of them just laying on there just to keep the light out for the time being. Just to make sure we don't have any more algae growth coming through on this side. 
And then what we've done is in there, we've, we've actually got some freshwater swan mussels. Um, they're about three inches uh, long and they're just helping with the filtration as well. So there's uh, about six in the canal here and another four in with the uh, rainbow trout and uh, they're just uh, helping filter out the uh, extra waste in there. So along the back you see the tomatoes in the suspended pot, Hyd deep water hydroponics are doing quite well and they're growing up. Um, talk about that perhaps in a separate video but uh, so you know they're doing well. And then if we come along the side of the canal you can see so the siphons happen to be kicking off at the moment so I'll talk about those in a second. And then we've actually got the, uh, the first of our plants into the deep water and uh, what we've used is we've used uh, mustard lettuce, um, so Osaka purple and mustard lettuce. Um, obviously being a chili farm we like things that are spicy so these seem to fit in quite nicely. So if we just grab one of them and we'll see how far the roots are. Yep, so there we go, you see the roots are getting in to the water, um, nice and wet and dripping down there. So they've just been in a couple of days. So they'll start to grow up and get longer. So as I said, the siphons there are both kicking off at the moment. So if we lift up here, you'll see that our grow beds are actually finished. Woo! So both of them have the clay balls in. It's the expanded clay. And we've just put a few plants into the first one. Got a little bit of a problem at the moment with my, my guard here is, is basically raising up and because the clay balls are still not soaking wet. So this is sort of floating up a little bit. And look in here, you'll see that the, the water's going down the side. That's going down nicely. So I just got a brick on there at the moment just to keep it down because while the clay uh, isn't completely waterlogged, then what's happening is that the, the guard is just sort of floating up there a little bit. So we've got the first few plants in, um, some basil, three different types there. Got well, coriander in the middle, put coriander in the middle just to try and attract any, any nasties that come in, so any aphids, any green fly, and anything like that. Um, hopefully we've attracted to the, the coriander, which is a bit of a shame because I really like coriander, but it seems that aphids do as well. So at least uh, if they do come in here, then we'll only have one plant that they're attacking. Got a couple of strawberries that have been in here uh, in a few days. But already um, they had a couple of unripe strawberries on there, but very quickly they've, uh, they've become ripe. We've got our first red strawberry, so no doubt somebody will be grabbing that soon. And then we've put uh, just uh, four chilies in the back here. So there's a, a couple of jalapenos and a couple of Thai orange chilies, just to uh, see how they get on. We don't put too many in because we think that they might need a few more nutrients. And then we've got uh, the water coming in here. So one thing you'll notice is that all of our yellow hose that we had on the, the first video, we've now replaced that all with poly pipe. So, uh, you know, a bit worried about what, uh, what might leach in through the uh, agricultural hose. So we replaced it all with poly pipe. So we used black instead of blue. Obviously blue is uh, more traditionally drinking water. Didn't want anyone to confuse you know, water coming out of fish tanks with drinking water. So we've, uh, we've done the black, split that out of the back there. And then we've gone into the second grow bed as well, and water's coming out through that. Um, cycled it round for a few days, so now we know that the siphons are working and the two grow beds are up and running. So we can now start to, to plant up and add some more um, fish. And uh, more fish means more nutrients, more nutrients, more plants, more plants, more filtration, and so on. Okay, thanks very much, guys.